Assalamu alaikum everybody. Hi and welcome to the lecture titled Millimeter Wave Communication along with MIMO for 5G Technologies. This is part of a series of lectures on 5G and beyond wireless systems. And uh, today's lecture will be dedicated to millimeter wave communication. So we will be discussing and explaining millimeter wave, the relationship between millimeter wave and MIMO, why are they fitting with each other, what are the challenges facing the implementation of millimeter wave in 5G systems, and how to tag it, how to address these challenges and make it a practical system that can be implemented in 5G technologies. So this is the main focus of this lecture. So we will start by the key motivation behind millimeter wave. As we all know, if we, if we come together and look at the spectrum picture and see here the spectrum, the, the spectrum that has been used up until now for Wi-Fi, cellular, AMF, FM, aviation, and many, many of the other similar applications, we can obviously see that it's spanning from 300 megahertz to 3 gigahertz. And this spectrum is becoming congested and very crowded day after day and year after year. And there is nothing left in order to deploy new technologies related to 5G and beyond. So what's the solution? The solution you need to either buy new spectrum or go up in the spectrum or find another way or increase the spectral efficiency or increase the cell densification in your network, as we said before. But this is not an effective solution and we have to tackle this. So the point we are going to discuss in this is, is as follows. The why millimeter wave is so important Huge amount of spectrum available in millimeter wave bands. Technology advances make millimeter wave possible for low-cost low consumer devices. Millimeter wave research is as old as wireless itself. It has been started long time ago and it's becoming really very popular with the technologies coming around. So if we ha if we take a look at the spectrum here and see with each other we can notice that the whole spectrum band here is basically fitting within this range and this is very tiny amount of spectrum however when we go up in the spectrum we can see that lots of available bandwidth become a full usable and you can make use of it and you can deploy it for many other consumer applications and this is the key motivation we are running out of the spectrum at low frequencies and there are there is a huge demand on data applications mobile phone applications and web-based applications that are consuming lots of resources that are hungry for more data more speed more internet and within the current spectrum we have we don't have much to, to afford or to cope up with the demand of these applications. So the solution, one of the proposed solution is to go up in the spectrum. That's the only solution. So what are we going to do is basically we are here when we go up in the pants, we can see that most of the bands are really allocated already for many services. So each box among these is basically a service and the ranges here determine the range of frequencies allocated for that service. And we can see as we move up in the frequency, we can notice that there is some amount of empty spectrum that can be utilized for other applications, especially the unlicensed ones. So here what we are doing, and this is what we'll be talking about. 
the gain and the aperture in millimeter wave. That, this is the first point we would like to point and explain and discuss about because this is one of the most challenges that are facing millimeter wave. We all know from the previous lectures and even from the wireless communication lecture that we talked about in the previous semester we had taken together that the propagation, the propagation characteristics is fully dependent on the distance and we uh, Due to distance, we have what we call path loss. And we know from Frisch's equation, the received power is inversely proportional to the distance square between the transmitter and receiver, as well as the frequency square itself. So what does this mean? The, the higher the frequency is, the more degradation in the power you will get at the receiver side. Yes, is that true? That's very true. So what's the other point? The further you go from the transmitter, the less power you will receive. Now what will happen when you go to the millimeter wave spectrum, millimeter wave band? Millimeter wave is running at 60 gigahertz or 70 or 100 giga or even beyond that. So how are you gonna solve this problem? Which means that your signal cannot really cannot go more than 10 meters or a few hundred meters, even less. Because at higher frequencies, we have more losses. More losses means your signal cannot go long, far distances. And to solve this problem, we need to come up with novel solutions. And these novel solutions can come up only when you have a full, deep, fundamental understanding of how wireless is working and the equations related to that. So let's have a look at... Uh, general conventional wireless communication systems where you have isotropic radiator here, a transmitter, and you have a receiver. So in this example, your power, you are radiating it, you are transmitting your power isotropic uniformly around the receiver from all the directions. So what will happen here, as you can see, let's, let's give you exactly some explanations about what will happen when you send your signal using an omnidirectional antenna or like that can radiate energy in all the directions. So basically we have, you have the transmitter is sending energy, sending the signal propagating through the air and this is your transmitter. The, the, receive, the receiver has an antenna and this antenna has certain amount of size, the antenna, yes? So the antenna can capture certain amount of energy. Now, th this energy is basically the one that you make use of and you try to, to decode your information from it, yes? Because the more energy the antenna the receiver antenna can get or obtain, the better your received signal will be and the higher the signal-to-noise ratio. However, we all know from the previous wireless communication course we had together that the antenna size is totally dependent on the wavelength of your, uh, of your frequency, the frequency you are operating over it. Let's say you are operating over a frequency of 1 gigahertz, yes? What's lambda at this? Lambda for frequency for a frequency equal one gigahertz. Lambda in this case is c over frequency, and basically you can find it that it's in the range of thirty centimeter. Yes, thirty centimeter. So let the size of the antenna is basically around usually it's lambda over 4 the size of the antenna so lambda over 4 means you have 30 over 4 around 7.5 centimeter yes so this the size 4.7.5 centimeter of length is we call it the aperture of the antenna and this can be exposed to signals and can collect and accumulate energy from the received signals. True? That's true. Let's now see what will happen when you increase the frequency to instead of 1 gigahertz to 10 gigahertz or 60 gigahertz. 
When you increase to 10 gigahertz, 10 gigahertz, you will have, when the frequency is 10 gigahertz, what will happen to the, to lambda? Lambda will, will decrease, definitely will decrease. So lambda in this case will become something like three, three centimeter. Yes, and what's the size of the size of the antenna? Three over four, it becomes something like less than one one centimeter. It's it becomes in millimeter in millimeter almost the size of the antenna. So when you have an an antenna of size, let's say five five millimeter or half centimeter, you are basically basically talking about an antenna with a very short size, with a very small size and very short length. And therefore, the amount of energy that you can capture from this area is very small. Yes, very small. You cannot capture much. And this is really one of the, one of the problems that we are facing in millimeter wave communication. When you go up in the frequency, Lambda gets smaller, the antenna size gets even much smaller because it's lambda over four, and accordingly, you have almost, you have very tiny antenna size, and therefore you don't have much power gathered from the antenna in order to be able to receive your signal successfully. So we need, we need to find a solution for this because this is very problematic. The other issue is related to the bandwidth. Yes, with millimeter wave, we have the bandwidth. The more bandwidth we have, the more bandwidth we have, and the receiver needs to process this bandwidth, the more noise we will gather, yes? More noise, obviously, more noise. And therefore, things are going to be very difficult at the receiver side because how do you calculate the noise? If I give you, uh, if I say the power spectral density of a certain system as something like in naught, this is power spectral density, frequency, and here the density of the noise, uh, the y-axis is the density of the noise and the x-axis is the frequency. How do you calculate the amount of noise? The amount of noise power you basically you tell me what's the bandwidth here let's say it's B you call it B and multiply it by N you basically you find the area under the curve and the area under the rectangle and you tell me it, the amount of noise power is this much if if I ask you to calculate it it's basically N naught multiplied by B and how do you find N naught? N naught is dependent also in the bandwidth and the temperature and the factor, a constant factor called K. So in millimeter wave, when you are talking about millimeter wave, you are talking about 60 gigahertz, 70, 100, something like this. And as you can see, the bandwidth is really, the, band, the amount of bandwidth around this carrier frequency is going to be very large and very huge. We are talking about one giga bandwidth, two giga or something like this. So when you calculate the amount of noise, it's becoming much much bigger than it was in the low, lower frequencies. So then to, summary, to sum up, to summarize this point and make it very clear for everybody, at millimeter wave, we have obviously two main challenge, many challenges. The first two main challenges are related to antenna size, which is due to lambda. The frequency is higher, lambda is smaller, and antenna size is much smaller, cannot capture much energy, very hard to manufacture, and see, and the other problem is related to bandwidth. And uh, larger bandwidth means higher noise power and lower signal to noise ratio, and this is very, very undesirable thing to have in your communication system. So, and when you think, and when you look at the first equation, the basic equation for calculating the received power, we can see here that the received power is equal to the transmit power over four pi r square, which is the received spectral density multiplied by lambda square over four pi. This four, lambda square over four pi is basically the received aperture I was talking about. The received aperture is dependent on lambda. 
So when frequency gets higher, lambda gets smaller, the frequency aperture, the, the receiver aperture becomes sh uh, smaller. And due to this, you cannot capture much energy. If this factor is small, if this factor is small, this means that the received bar is small. So you need to solve this problem, to solve this, to compensate for this, to find a way to overcome this. So how can we do that? Simply, if you if you if you increase the gain, we all we from the first equation we know that the received power is also dependent on the gain of the receive antenna and gain of the transmit antenna. If you increase the gain of the receive antenna and make it big enough so that it com it can compensate or cancel the effect of small receive aperture, then in this case you will end up canceling the effect of this term. Yes, simply you will cancel. You will remove the effect of this term totally from your system. And accordingly, you will be able to capture much more energy at the receiver side and enhance the signal to noise ratio. And accordingly, you will be able to receive your power, your signal and decode it successfully and receive the data related to certain application you are trying to communicate and get out of it. So what else we can improve in, in millimeter wave? We can also, we have the, vari the variable related to transmit antenna. Yes, transmit antenna again, which is GTX. If you can improve this by, by increasing the, the beam forming gain at the transmitter, we can also get some additional gain that can improve the signal to noise ratio and also reduce the interference if you make your beam very narrow. And accordingly, you can kind of, GTX can overcome the problem of noise bandwidth and GRX can overcome the problem related to smaller wavelength, which, which is basically related to capturing less energy, smaller amount of energy at the antenna. So at the end of the day, these are the two important factors, two important points that I want to draw your attention to. First, to, first to uh, understand the, re the relationship between lambda and the frequency, lambda, the, the wavelength and the antenna aperture, and how and also the bandwidth noise and how to solve these problems by using GRX and GTX. Any questions so far? You can write in the chat system, in the chat room downside, you can write your question if you have any questions. So I hope everything is very clear and everything is very uh, obvious and evident for you. And we can just continue, move on to the next part. As you can see here, when you install, when you increase GRX, when you improve GRX, you have like an array of antennas at the receiver here. And TX, you have an array of antennas at the transmitter so that you improve your performance. So now these are the problems and now we know the solution for them. Yes? Yes, I, I believe these are the main problems for wireless communication and you can you can even look at the pots and material related to that and read more about them but these are the summary of what we are discussing about or what we are talking about so i hope that was you clear for you and very obvious so now now let's move to the, to the topic related to the constraints in millimeter wave information theory and design. So millimeter wave basically not it involves not only the constraints related to antenna aperture and noise and this, but also one of the most critical constraints is related to the propagation environment. Yes. In millimeter wave, we have 60 gigahertz, yes, 60 gigahertz frequency. What will happen for this frequency when it hits a mountain or when it hits a building or when it hits a wall? Can you tell me, for example, in the microwaves, in the microwave uh, band, 
or where we have like 1 gigahertz or 900 megahertz, you have a signal like this of high frequency. So when it hits, when it hits a certain building, yes, when it hits a certain building, you are, the, the, the building will not affect it too much. You know why? The building will not affect it too much because basically you will, the, the length, the physical length of the building is shorter than the length, the wavelength of the signal itself. And therefore, the building will hit the wave just one time or two times or three times. So it will suppress the amplitude of the signal. The building will suppress the amplitude of the signal just once, not more, just once or twice, not more than that. But just imagine the other scenario with me where you have a shorter wavelength due to having a very high frequency signal that's operating at gigahertz, like let's say 60 gigahertz, and this signal, once it hits the wall or the building, it will oscillate within the wall like more than 1,100 times sometimes. Each time it oscillates within the building, the building kind of suppresses the amplitude of the signal by certain factor. So imagine this building hits or suppresses this signal 100 times and you have an input power of 10 dB, 10 dBm. The output power barely can be minus, minus 100 dB or less. Even sometimes you, you don't have any power. That's why we sometimes describe millimeter wave as frequencies that cannot penetrate through objects, walls, buildings, trees, mountains, bodies, even human body can block the wave. Why, why is that? Because the frequency is very high, the wavelength is very short, and a, a, any, any material with physical length, with physical length, let's say the length of the material is L, a greater than lambda, the frequency of the, the wavelength of the signal, then it suppresses the signal severely significantly affects the amplitude and due to this if it suppresses it hundred times due to oscillating it due to the number of oscillations or the number of periods it travels within the length of the object uh, it becomes very difficult for the signal to penetrate the object and receive it from the other side that's why we have what we call penetration loss at millimeter wave Penetration loss is very, very dangerous and very tough, very tough uh, phenomena that we are facing in millimeter wave. And this problem also needs some solutions. We have also the mobility issue. Yes, mobility. When, when the receiver or the transmitter moving with a very high speed, you are most likely going to face some problems related to Doppler and receiving your data effectively and efficiently is going to be challenging. What's the other problem? The other problem is orientation. Why is orientation? In millimeter wave, as we know, it's not the environment is not rich scattering. What do I mean by not rich scattering? Not rich scattering means since the signal does not get reflected of many objects because the object's physical size is much larger than the wavelength itself. So the object's kind of observing, kind of absorbing the signals, yes? They don't allow the signals to penetrate. They don't allow the much too many signals to be reflected with a strong power. So basically, at the end of the day, you end up not having too many reflectors, too many bath comings at the receiver. And this is really not a very desirable thing. Why, why it's not desirable? Because suppose you are transmitting your signal with vertical polarization, yes? And uh, let's say your, your, antenna, your antenna at the receiver is horizontally polarized. 
And while you are transmitting your signal through the air, the signal sense it doesn't get reflected of many objects and there is no, the environment is not rich scattering and uh, it doesn't penetrate through objects and doesn't get reflected uh, in, in a similar manner like the low frequencies do. In this case, uh, you will end up receiving your signal at the receiver with vertical polarization too. So if, if the signal is vertically polarized at the transmitter and it's vertically polarized at the receiver and the receiver antenna is horizontally polarized, as you can see, they are ben perpendicular to each other. Perpendicular to each other means there will be no current, no induction current generated in the antenna. And if there is if there is no induction in the antenna, means no, you are you are not generating a current inside the antenna due to the electromagnetic wave that you have received. There will be no electrical current, which means no data, which means you cannot decode or see any information the transmitter sent to you. And that's why in millimeter wave, we need to be very careful about that. If the transmitter sends with vertical polarization, the receiver should also receive with vertical polarization. If the transmitter uses horizontal polarization, the receiver has two to use horizontal polarization. Otherwise, you will have some polarization mismatch between the transmitter and receiver and due to this, you might not be able to receive your data. One of the other solution, now, now if, you, if you think about this problem, you, you will ask me and tell me, what about the lower frequencies? Didn't we have this problem before? I will tell you simply, at lower frequencies, you, you, you don't care about the polarization at the, at the transmitter and receiver, yes? You don't care, this is the transmitter, TX, and this is the receiver because at the end of the day when you transmit your signal at a lower frequency and your signal get reflected of many objects and get propagate and get and penetrates the buildings in front of it and many other objects it gets reflected off them there is reflection diffraction uh, abs uh, m m many physical phenomena happens to the signal that can lead to the generation of hundreds, even sometimes thousands of reflected bats, yes? Coming at the same time to the receiver, yes? Among these ref reflected bats, or all these reflected bats, you will have at least 10, ten of, tens of these bats re reaching with the same polarization as the receiver, yes? And if you have the same polarization at the receiver, then you can successfully generate induction current and generate electrical signal, and then convert your electrical signal to uh, data that you, the transmitter has sent to you. And this is the point. Well, so we have these challenges from the environment. Yes, orientation, not rich scattering. Now we finish the challenges from the environment, yes? We have challenges from the antenna. We need efficient antenna design, as we explained before. Array geometry, feed antennas. These are the challenges coming from the antenna design. So this is another section. And you have, once you receive your data, you have uh, an RF chain. You have your antennas here, an analog processing, RF chain, joint processing, analog a to DC, ADC, analog to digital converter, many of them, and then your baseband processing. As you can see, uh, we have in the RF chain and the baseband processing in order to receive our data, we, we go through several problems, including quantized phase shifters, insertion loss, due to reflection and this and that, due to mismatch between the loads, mixed signal power consumption, you have beam tracking problem to track the beam al align exactly to the transmitting beam, you have equalization problem, synchronization, phase noise, low, low gain, linearity, all these are very, very difficult problem to handle 
and we all need to take care of. So I, I, I think I think all these problems open hundreds or thousands of, of opportunities for us to, as researchers to come up with novel solutions that can overcome these problems. Because as researchers, we love problems. We are always seeking for problems, trying to find novel solutions for them, and propose them to the world, to the community, so that people can make use of it and improve the systems and improve the people quality of life and make things better and life easier, safer, faster, simpler, and more, much more convenient. So this is the goal and this is what we are doing. So now, now I, the, Analog processing, you already know this block diagram from your uh, introduction to communication course, analog communication course. RF chain, which includes filters, power amplifiers, and oscillators, and these things. Joint processing, which combines all the chains with each other. And then you have A to DC, which also you, you know how, to, how it works from basic communication systems. So you basically have everything you know from everything you know from the previous courses can apply here, but from a different perspective because the signal now has much higher frequencies and lambda is much smaller. So it's make it makes it harder to process it. It makes it more susceptible to errors, mismatch, noise, impairments, hardware and these things. So I believe, I believe these are the main issues and these are the, the main points that we have to kind of be aware of when we come to the field of millimeter wave communication and especially when we think of developing or designing our own millimeter wave transmitter and receiver. Why do we need them? Basically, obviously, because they can provide us data rate in gigabit per second easily, like for for TV, real-time streaming, high-definition videos, real-time gaming, for YouTube to work in streaming without any delay. You need such kind of technologies. You know now, most of you at home, you are getting the internet from telecom companies, and these telecom companies are basically leasing you a line, yes? Uh, this line can be ADSL, VDSL, or sometimes fiber optics. And now, imagine the cost associated with that, digging into the ground, and uh, installing the cables and the equipment until it reaches your home. Yes, and so that you can enjoy the internet. But what if your home is really very far from the city or you want your access to be uh, with much less cost than, it's, uh, than the normal conventional way? So in this case, the, the, there will be kind of a base station inside the city and this base station is providing fixed wireless access back hauling to the homes. So you 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 know the TV dish, yes, the 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 antenna dish that you are using for your TV. You will have a similar thing, kind of this dish, but this 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 dish is providing you the internet with the internet of a speed of more than two, 20 or 30 gigabit per second. So your TV and your all other computer and mobile devices will be running applications that use real-time live streaming, HD video, gaming, this and that, without feeling any delay or any degradation in the quality or any loss in your data. So imagine the future with this with such kind of technology. The future is really unbelievable. 
you we must even now we'll, we'll show you some of the technologies that are being implemented and used in the market and this is really very very exciting time to be in and to to really follow up with this technology and make use of it so we discussed now the impairments the difficulties and one last point to mention here that millimeter wave uh, as we said since it suffers from uh, lower antenna sizes you cannot capture much energy and you need to compensate for that so it's most of the time millimeter wave technology is married with MIMO technology MIMO where you have hundreds of antennas, many antennas, even massive MIMO, more than 200 antennas and you want these antennas all together, yes, to form beams, narrow beams that can go farther distances, reduce the interference and improve the signal to noise ratio again. By doing so, you can have very amazing millimeter communication system millimeter wave communication system that can work and run seamlessly and successfully now this table is very important table and uh, because it compares one of the most fundamental key aspects of millimeter wave communication it's basically the channel so we will be comparing the microwave millimeter wave wi-fi and millimeter wave 5g you you Everybody knows uh, 802.11b or uh, n, which can provide you a data rate up to 300 megahertz. Yes, there is an improvement on Wi-Fi that makes Wi-Fi able to operate of at 60 gigahertz. Yes, 60 gigahertz. So with 60 gigahertz, you have a bandwidth of let's say 2 gigahertz and this can improve your, your data rate to be in gigabit per second, maybe 10 gigabit per second. So this was developed and already used in the industry, maybe around 2012, it was ready in the market, this, this access point. We call, it, we call this technology Y gig, Y gig. So millim 60 gigahertz as an access point for transmitting and using it to, for internet connections was first introduced to Wi-Fi systems under the name Ygig. Now for 5G, it, it has been introduced in 2016-17. So it's kind of is still new to 5G. 5G Wi-Fi because 5G you can classify it under the category of cellular while y, y gig under the category of Wi-Fi. 5G is standardized by 3GBB organization while Wi-Fi is standardized by IEEE organization. Yes, and both are different organizations responsible for different for standardizing the technologies and uh, launching uh, basically with collaboration with the industry and launching it to the market now the the question i want to ask now is why do we call is that why do we call the frequencies the lower frequencies microwave frequencies and the higher frequencies millimeter wave now, one who understands the relationship between the wavelength and the frequency can say, I understand why you named it millimeter wave because the lambda, lambda at 60 gigahertz is in millimeter dimension, yes? It's like two millimeter, five millimeter, something like this. I understand this, but when I go in lower to lower frequencies, I expect since the frequency is lower here, the frequency is lower is lower than the frequency used for millimeter wave. I expect lambda to be larger. Lambda here is larger, yes. 
So if lambda is larger, this means it's larger than millimeter wave, which possibly means that it's centimeter in centimeter, yes, or in meter, in centimeter. So you should call it centimeter wave. Why do we call it microwave? Yes? Do you understand the question? It's really very, very tricky question and gets us sometimes confused due to the naming. And the answer to this question is basically in for microwave, they named microwave based on the energy of the signal, based on the energy. The energy of the signal at lower frequencies like one gig and below is you, you after you calculate it, it will be in micro, micro, in micro units, micro, micro joule, something like this, micro joule. So the name was inspired by the energy of the signal. Yes, the name came after this uh, energy of the signal, not after the the wavelength. Well, whereas millimeter wave, the name was after the wavelength, not the energy. The energy will be much larger in millimeter wave. Everybody knows that. Because higher frequency, higher energy. The relationship between energy and the frequency is proportional. So now let's compare. Having understood this important fact related to naming and the uh, difference between millimeter wave at Wi-Fi and millimeter wave at 5G, we can now erase these things, erase these points, and move to discussing the key other differences between them. What about the bandwidth? The bandwidth, the bandwidth as you can see here for microwave, Wi-Fi or cellular, the bandwidth is mostly ranges between 1.4 megahertz and 160 megahertz. Very small amount of bandwidth. Whereas for millimeter wave Wi-Fi, you have bandwidth of around 2.16 gigahertz. Imagine what one, in one of the lectures I talked about the importance of bandwidth, how costly it is and the companies they buy it from the government and the government license it for the companies and we said sometimes the companies pay million of dollars billion of dollars in p to buy these spectrums in order to deploy it employ it and use it for serving the customers so increasing the spectrum is really really very plus big advantage for millimeter wave but as usual it doesn't come cost-free. It comes with some compromises, some difficulties, some, some problems and issues that we as researchers and engineers are responsible for uh, facing these problems and trying to come up with effective novel solutions that can mitigate and reduce the, effect, the side effect of these issues so that we can make use of it in practical applications. So millimeter wave Wi-Fi, as we can see, the bandwidth is really large, and it's around 2.16 gigahertz. In millimeter wave 5G, the bandwidth also can reach up to 2 gigahertz, depends on the spectrum you are running on. Now, this is the bandwidth. The key point here, here I want you to know and notice that the bandwidth as millimeter wave is much, much, much larger than the bandwidth, even more than 20 times the bandwidth. Let's say here 100 megahertz maximum sometimes. The bandwidth at millimeter wave is 20 times or more larger than the bandwidth at microwave, which means you can deploy 20 times more users, 20 times more application, 20 times more data traffic. And this is re really very, very advantageous and very critical. So now we are done with the bandwidth point. What about, what about the antennas at base station or access point? In, milli in microwave, the number of antennas in Wi-Fi or LTE was up to eight antennas. We didn't exceed this number. 
While in millimeter wave MIMO, the number of antennas is ranging from, uh, at Wi-Fi I'm talking about, ranging from 16 to 32 antenna at the access point, at the base station. For millimeter wave 5G, the number of antenna is even going to increase more and more, 64 to 256 antennas at the transmitter. Nokia already implemented base stations with this number, 256. What about the number of antennas at the mobile station, at the smartphone? So for microwave, mostly, most of the phones we have in our hands, they have one antenna or two at maximum. But for when you go to millimeter wave Wi-Fi and Y-Gig, the, the receivers, which are basically right now laptops, laptops, Dell laptops, that are using, they have millimeter wave chips that can receive the signals at millimeter wa millimeter wave uh, range. And the number of antennas at the laptops ranges from 16 to 32 antenna. In millimeter wave 5G, the 5G phones, which are expected to be released very soon after one year or so, the number of antennas inside the phone is expected to be from 4 to 16. So you will have antenna if you don't buy if you if you don't have such phones, you cannot make use of the millimeter wave technology. It will not be very advantageous for you. Now this is these are the easy points to compare with number of antennas and bandwidth and number of antennas at the mobile station and uh, smartphone. This is not very difficult. Now let's understand the points related to channel. Yes, these are the points related to channel. And here things you, I want you to remember with me the knowledge you have. Get obtained from wireless communication course, especially the part related to wireless channel propagation models. So in that part, we talked about delay spread. Yes, we talked about Doppler spread. Yes, we talked about angular spread, clusters, orientation, reflections, this and that. To remind you of what we talked about, we talked about small, large scale fading and small scale fading. Large scale fading and the small scale fading small scale fading so in large scale fading we said we have we have bath loss bath loss and we have shadowing and bath loss happens due to distance shadowing happens due to obstacles between the transmitter and receiver while in small scale fading we have we have many things that happen due to small scale we have first fading that comes due to the, rece the reception of hundreds, thousands of rays coming at the same time. The these together, they form a distribution for the amplitude. Your amplitude uh, gets, gets, keeps changing randomly and fluctuating in a random manner. Why? Because of the random, uh, random reception and random number and random phases and amplitudes of the received rays that are concurrently summed with each other. So we have fading. We have we called it this Rayleigh, Rayshian, Nakagami, whatever. Whatever we have in small scale fading, we have delay spread. DS, delay spread, and we have Doppler spread, and we have angular spread. And we said delay spread is basically when you receive multiple paths at different times where your receiver can resolve them and separate them and distinguish that this path, this ray, this bunch of rays reach this bunch of rays reaches the receiver at time equal one microsecond, while the next com the next con uh, the next coming bunch of rays reaches the receiver at two microsecond, at three, at four. So you end up having a delay spread in the channel, and this delay spread is responsible for creating a frequency selective channel. And we said delay spread is related to the coherence bandwidth of the channel. Yes. The coherence bandwidth of the channel P 
PC is equal to one over delay spread. And the more delay spread you have, the shorter the coherence bandwidth will be, and therefore your channel in the frequency domain will be more selective. For the doubler spread, we said doubler spread is related to the coherence time of the channel. More doubler spread, doubler spread in the frequency, delay spread in time. We, we call the channel in doubler spread time selective. Time selective, frequency dispersive. Doubler spread, time dispersive, time dispersive, frequency selective. And the coherence time here is related to the delay spread. Larger delay spread means smaller coherence time, means the channel is changing very rapidly, fast fading. And we have last thing, we have angular spread. And we said angular spread is due to the in, in spatial domain. So this is in time domain, delay spread, doubler spread in frequency domain, angular spread in space domain. And this is related to, to coherence distance, coherence distance. More delay spread, more angular spread means shorter delay, co shorter coherence distance, which means that the channel changes very rapidly when you change the location. Having reminded you with this, now let's go to discuss the delay spread in microwave, millimeter wave, and millimeter wave 5G. In, the, in microwave, the delay spread, the delay spread, which is DS, DS due to the re receiving multiple bands at different times. The, we call it multiple, multiple tap channel. In this case, we have the delay spread, the amount of delay spread ranges between 100 nanosecond to 2 microsecond, yes? 2 microsecond, this is due to the channel. The channel is memory. In millimeter wave, since we don't have too many reflections and the, the, the signal cannot go for very long distances, yes, it cannot penetrate, it cannot go for very lo long distances, the, the delay spread can be measured in 5 nanosecond, 5 to 47 nanosecond. Imagine with me, is much, much, much shorter, much smaller than the delay spread in microwave. Delay spread in microwave is larger. And the reason why is now known to you, because in microwave we have rich scattering environment, the signal has low frequency, so, uh, larger wavelength can penetrate through walls, buildings, objects, can get reflected, can get diffracted, can have many, uh, you will receive money pass at the receiver, and that's why you have large delay spread, because the signal will travel large distances uh, until it reaches your receiver. While in millimeter wave, you don't have this opportunity, your signal will not travel for long distances, and most of the signals, they don't get reflected of the objects around you. And therefore, the signals, the delay uh, spread in the millimeter wave is shorter in terms of time. So if, if this has this delay spread this for millimeter wave, here you have this delay spread or even shorter, shorter. In millimeter wave 5G, more or less the same, since you are using the same, almost the same frequency, 12 to 40 nano, nanosecond. So now let, let's connect this with equalization. Yes, my friends, everybody among you, the experts in wireless communication, let's connect this to equalization. I want to ask you a question here, question mark. So the question says, which one has more equalization steps? Millimeter wave systems or microwave system, or which one has more tabs? And therefore, if you want to use conventional equalization in time domain, it's gonna be much more complex. Which one, millimeter wave or microwave? In the comment below, you can answer. Millimeter wave or microwave, which one has more number of tabs and why
and which one needs more complex equalization and why. Now, for most of you, I believe the obvious answer might be obviously since the delay spread of microwave is larger, then this means that the equalization is going to be much more complex in, my, in microwave and you will have more taps. But unfortunately, this is wrong answer. And the reason for that is the following. In millimeter wave, we have, it, it, it's, it's true we have shorter delay spread due to the channel. But don't forget that we are using frequencies, we are using signals of a very high frequencies, which means the pulses at millimeter wave have very short symbol duration, yes? Very short symbol duration corresponds to large bandwidth. So very short symbol duration that can be also in nanosecond, nanosecond can be one nanosecond, and you have delay spread of, four, of 47 nanosecond. How many taps you will have at millimeter wave? 47 divided by one nanosecond, you have around 47 taps. Yes, 47 taps is too much as you need an equalizer of 47 taps in time domains to be able, or 47 delay element, to be able to reconstruct your signal back. And this is difficult, tedious, very complicated and sophisticated structure unless you go to the frequency domain. And that's why frequency in millimeter wave is still a very serious problem. And you need to be careful with it and you need to give attention to it to handle it properly. While equalization in microwave, although the channel delay spread is larger, but the symbol duration also is large because the signal frequency, the signal frequency is lower. Frequency lower, time duration is larger. When time duration is larger, we are talking about maybe half microsecond, half microsecond. How many taps you will get at half microsecond if the pulse duration half microsecond? You calculate the delay spread 2 microsecond over 0.5 microsecond. You have around, let's say, 4 taps. 4 taps. While in millimeter wave, you have 50, 60 taps. And there, many of these taps will be zeros, like due to the, the sparsity of the channel. So this is, if you understood this point, you will be able to maybe get some ideas about how to deploy efficient equalizers at the receiver. Now, what about angular spread? Let's move to angular spread. Yes, angular spread. In microwave, the angular spread is one to 60 degree angular spread. But in millimeter wave, generally, generally, Depends. Sometimes it's between 60 to 100, and in 5G they say it's up to 50, 50 degree. And this this is really uh, affected by the beam forming by the antenna. So in millimeter in millimeter wave the antennas are much narrower than the antennas in microwave. So. The, the 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 angular spread although it's supposed to be larger in much larger in millimeter wave but if, if you make the antenna narrower you will be able to reduce the amount of the angular spread what about the number of clusters number of clusters means the number of reflectors how many how many how many reflections from different clusters you are going to get in microwave usually from four to nine four four is basically like think of it like four taps four taps something like that in millimeter wave wi-fi number of reflectors here you cannot think of it like taps it's like Bunch, bunch of rays coming at different times. So you might have bunch of rays coming at this point 
and then you have zero 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 and then add another one punch another one punch something like this so since since the millimeter wave signals cannot propagate through walls and buildings and trees and objects and mountains and so forth so the the, the number of clusters and number of reflections are going to be much less orientation sensitivity I already explained this related to polarization. Orientation at, mi at microwave, we don't care much about orientation, but in millimeter wave, we, we do care medium and in 5G even very, very sensitive, whether you, whether you send vertically polarized or horizontally polarized. What about small scale fading? Obviously, in microwave, we usually experience really. Why really? Because the environment is very rich scattering and you are not receiving any line of sight component and you have hundreds or thousands of rays reaching the receiver simultaneously at the same time, causing random fluctuations to the amplitude, which can be modeled using Rayleigh. While in millimeter wave, usually sometimes you are going to get line of sight component line of sight component between the transmitter and receiver main line of sight component and beside that you are always going to get less number of reflections so you are close to line of sight modeling and nakagami is basically the closest one to this in 5g millimeter wave sometimes when you have perfect alignment and perfect line of sight between the transmitter and receiver you might not get even Nakagami at all. You get no fading. No fading means you, ha you are with the beam, the transmitter and receiver, and you, you, you don't have channel. The channel is just influenced by the number of antennas at the transmitter and receiver. And this depends on the angle orientation to form the beam. And then at the receiver, you just get noise, and then you go, you go, you go ahead and you try to detect your signal from the noise. So obviously this is something less, uh, you, you don't need to worry much about it. What about large scale fading now? Large scale fading is very critical thing as well in millimeter wave. Why? Because of the, sh uh, because it's, it, the signal at higher frequency doesn't propagate for large distances why because uh, we said the received power degrades the degradation in the received power is inversely proportional to the frequency when the when the frequency when the frequency gets higher the degradation becomes more because it's dependent on the frequency square while at lower frequencies microwave it's distance dependent and shadowing but the signal itself has lower frequency so it can penetrate for longer distances millimeter wave 5g you have distance dependent and the blockage so mainly blockage shadowing and distance they are very very problematic issues in 5g and wi-fi systems using 60 gigahertz in 5G that are using millimeter wave base station, you can block the signal by your hand. Imagine by your head, by your body, by a pot, by a table, by book. But it's not not really. Uh, if there is any object between the transmitter and receiver, your communication is under risk. Your link can be cut. So to solve this problem, you need to think of approaches and techniques that can mitigate this issue. For example, uh, you, you can think of having multiple redundant links so that if one of the links get cut, so you have another link that can take over and continue the communication normally. <coughs> the other point is bat loss exponent. We, we know path loss exponent from free space equation. Path loss exponent is related to the environment. Basically, you, you, get this, uh, you get this factor, constant factor, while you are modeling the channel. You say that the path loss exponent of your channel is 2, which is 
Sometimes we model it like alpha or lambda. To, in microwave, it's between two and four, but in millimeter wave, it depends on the environment. For line of sight cases, you have two, 2.5. Non-line of sight cases, you have five. Of course, the higher the value, the worse the received power will be. The higher the value, the worse the received power will be. What about penetration loss? Penetration loss, some in millimeter wave varies, but in millimeter wave 5G, very high. Channel sparsity in microwave, we don't have much. Sparsity means that you don't receive all the rays with uh, some of the tabs will be zeros while uh, in the delay spread channel when you measure the number of tabs in your channel. For example, in millimeter wave, you receive a, a channel like this, the tabs like this, but in microwave, you receive a signal, uh, the delay spread can be something like this. And then again, zeros and then this. So we since there are no no received paths here, there are zeros. We call this region sparse. So there is much sparsity here. While in microwave signals, microwave communication system, you don't have this feature. What about last point? Channel sparsity is less, more, more, and special correlation in microwave less, in millimeter wave much more, and uh, for both Wi-Fi and 5G. So this table is giving a very comprehensive overview about the differences between millimeter wave in Wi-Fi, 5G, and microwave systems. If you understand this table and followed up with us and the differences and you understand the meaning of them, you have very solid understanding and uh, solid view about millimeter wave and how is it different than the others and based on that forming new ideas and new techniques and new methods that can solve the problems related to that which is going to be significantly important so we can stop at here and continue after a few minutes thank you very much and see you in the next part